I was asked the other day, what are some truly great men that have lived in our time? George Washington? Davy Crockett? Well, both very good men. Very good. But I have a story here that I have jotted down about my good friend Colin, who figured out a way to take down the casinos. By putting one on red and one on black, you always win, you'll never lose. <clears throat> Colin was born just like you or me, born with his very own destiny. Some born to run, some born to swim, but Colin O'Keefe, he was born to win. He had a swagger to his step and a sparkle in his eye, and when it came to gambling, he was never shy. Down in Las Vegas, he played his game, and soon that town would know his name. He tried poker and craps and slots and bingo, blackjack, baccarat, and lots of kino. He gambled big and he gambled small, but the casinos kept taking it all. He started to quit and began to cry, but then he decided to give roulette a try. He sat at the table and studied the wheel and noticed something that surely wasn't real. A 100% chance of winning and nobody knew and they couldn't stop him even if they wanted to. He kept his cool. He seemed pretty hip. He slapped down a 50 and he got his chips. He ordered his drink, a water on the racks. And he began to awe and he began to shock. The dealer, poor thing, hadn't a clue that in an hour's time her job was through. She said, where are you from, sir? What are you called? Cullen lit up his stogie, and said, Just spin the ball. The ball went round, and Colin couldn't go back, and he placed $20 on black. No one thought anything of it as the ball went round, but Colin put 20 more dollars down. Colin said, This goes on red. The dealer knew that she was good as dead. Here's the secret if you didn't already know. On red or black, the ball has to go. It doesn't take a genius to know what is meant, that the odds of winning are 100%. Of course, Colin won. He doubled his money. He winked at the dealer and said, Thank you, honey. Why well, stop there? He did it again. And as you know, we continue to win. He did this for weeks, all through the day. And the casinos kept having to pay. They went bankrupt all through the town. Casino after casino kept crumbling down. He went slow. He started small. He took down the tables in the strip malls, the Longhorn, the Rio, and Main Street. They were the next to feel Collins' heat. He kept going. He had no fear. Next was Sam's Town, then the Stratosphere. The stations, Border, Santa Fe, and Sunset. Binions, the Cosmo, and the Golden Nugget. He was offered bribes to keep him away, and it would work for about a day. Carrot Top washes dishes and Celine Dion's car. Terry Fader made him food and Wayne Newton tended bar. Penn did his taxes and Teller cut his hair and every night he had a massage from Cher. The perks were nice, but they couldn't keep him away. He then took down the Luxor, Mandalay Bay, Bills, Fremont, and T.I., the Venetia, the Rio, and N.Y., N.Y. He was brave and he kept his stand. The next, to, next came Paris and then the MGM Grand. He now wore a cape and carried a golden chalice as he took down the mirage in Caesar's palace. One on red and one on black. Don't think twice and don't look back. Always a winner, 
always a sure thing until one day it landed on green? Did that really just happen? Did Colin just lose? The word spread fast as others got the news. He was shocked and equally mad, a little depressed and very sad. He walked out covered in shame for losing was never part of his game. He went to his mansion and sulked for a year, drowning his sorrow in whiskey and beer. How can I fix this, he thought in his head, and then it hit him like a pipe made of lead. I put some on black and some on red, that we knew, it's already been said. But to cover my bases, I put some on green. Then I can't lose, it covers everything. Back he went to the city of sin and took down Circus Circus and Alice Island. All the casinos were finished, save maybe three or four. But they knew their fate and closed down their doors. All but one casino. Who could it be? I think you know. The East Side Cannery. To them, Colin was just an ordinary man like your average Joe or your average Stan. He waltzed in with his jug of H2O. Straight to the roulette table, he started to go. The dealer didn't stammer, didn't even shake, looked at Colin's soul and said, Our money, it's not to take! We'll see about that, you foolish little clown! I'll destroy this place and I'll take it down! <sighs> Don't be thick in front of me, or I'll take your life. Then I'll burn down your house and have sex with your wife. You try to imitate, imitate me again, and it will be the last thing that you'll tell. And I'll cut your throat, and I'll send you to hell. The dealer wasn't scared and said, what's your bet? Colin sipped his water and got his lips wet. I'll take one on three, and... No, I'll take... No, that's not right. L let me see. How about five on black and six on red? No, that's not right, as he scratched his head. The formula! He forgot it! Where did it go? All night, Colin's supply of money went low. After his hour, his money had vanished, and Colin was defeated and felt so famished. Now Colin begs on the street for a penny or a nickel just to make ends meet. Moral of the story, I know you've been told, but greed has a way of making your life unfold. Colin was rich, but couldn't stop while ahead. Now he rummages through trash, and a bench is his bed. Hey, dude, do we have any lentils? Huh? Oh. Um, and a cat box, I believe. Oh, awesome. Do the dog flap right there. Cool. All right. Good start. Uh, ah! Hmm. Oh, hello there. How are you doing? Ah, that's stupid. <laughs> Colin was rich. <laughs> 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 so Colin was rich, but wouldn't stop while ahead. Now he rummages through trash, and a bench is his bed. Hey, dude, do we have any lentils? And the uh, dog house. Oh, okay. Cool. Through the cat flap. <laughs>